So good control at the slow speeds because we did that minimum PWM strength and then high speed. Ah! Watch it. Oh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> we are back. This is part two of the steering video. We are going to mount our steering motor and then connect it to our steering arm so that way everything moves and we'll hook it up to a potentiometer. I do realize there's a little bit of rust and the, the project is worse for the wear. I don't, I don't want to talk about it. I've, I've seen some things. But we are forging ahead. Let's get going. First thing we need to do is cut some flat bar to size. Here's the old motor mount from the wiper rack. Just using it as a drill guide so that way all the holes end up in the right spot. It's another good reason why you should always ignore your wife when she says you have too much junk in the garage. We are welded on and looking fine. Just tack welds for now when we get everything dialed in. Motor's bolted on. I put on the arm for you and I even wired it up. Whoa, it's exciting. So, we need to make an arm that connects that. Over to here. First step is to attach the steering arm to this. I've already marked out the spot. I picked the same exact spot that this hole was, so that way when I round all of these edges over, everything will look kind of uniform and nice. Let's do the hole. moment of truth does it fit it's a bit overly compared to the last one not sure why but as long as it fits and spins i don't care oh yeah almost almost bit more lube bit more squeezing yeah beautiful all right we are good on that let's get it Let's get it installed. It's installed on the motor, and we've got a little bit of a problem. Anybody see what it is? If you can see what the problem is, raise your hand. <laughs> We're going to have to cut this down a bit. I could alternately just work from the top of the range like that. So we go full right turn, full left turn, but then... Uh, my steering gear gets above this level and ideally I want to have a cage that comes out from here and down so that way no little fingers can get stuck into this stuff. So we're going to trim this down so that way it'll fit when the motor's at the full bottom range and then we'll keep working on our geometry. Crisis averted. We are one step closer to victory. Bottom of this bar's been cut off so they can now move relative to each other. Then I've rounded this edge. I'll eventually clean up all the edges and make it actually look nice. Right now, we're just going for mechanics. I've welded this off screen. This will go here. And then we'll bring this up to meet it. And the finished product will look something like... Something like that. The closer I bring this to here, the more extreme these angles end up being on the turns. So we're going as far away as I can without this bar bashing into this when we do a full right hand turn all right so i'm not gonna lie to you i forgot to plug in the microphone for this clip uh so we're dubbing this in uh, let's get started swishy hand shake pause two two we've got, <laughs> we've got two constraining factors one is the fact that this bottom bar wiggles uh so that way i need to be kind of centered on top of that or else uh it'll kind of wiggle every single time i turn the other factor is that when we take the steering motor to a full right hand turn we don't want to bash the steering arm into the frame um, so we're just going to scoot it back a little bit then i'm going to mark this weld it on and we'll be all set from there and like magic it's welded on now unfortunately i cannot plug it in because if we go all the way to a full left turn we do hit here so we don't have a full 360 degree rotation available on our steering arm, but that's fine. We're gonna knock out the electronics, do the coating, then I'll turn it on and you can watch it go. I promise it's gonna happen in this video. 
first step to the electronics is we need to turn this DC motor into a servo motor. To do that, we need to always know exactly where this arm is in space. And for that, we are going to use a potentiometer. Now, this is a panel mount single turn potentiometer. This is just what I had lying around. I will go to a slightly larger one, but I've already focus bar. I've already installed one exactly like this here, and I've ground off the edge a bit just so that way I could attach all of my timing stuff to it. Timing stuff. I have got a toothed, 20 tooth timing belt pulley. These are aluminum, pretty cheap online. Other options would have been a chain, but that's a bit too heavy duty. Or we could have gone for like a rubber band pulley kind of system. Uh, but because this can be bouncing around a bunch, I definitely wanted to make sure that we didn't lose track of where we are because there's no correction for that if we start skipping teeth. So we've got a 20 tooth pulley for, for our potentiometer. And that's because this is a single turn pot and this guy's only going to go 180 degrees one way or the other. So that'll give us pretty much full range on our potentiometer. Larger one, this is a 40 tooth, and all I've done is drilled it out on the inside so that way it fits the front of my steering motor, like that. I've sized the holes to the timing belt that I could get because uh, unfortunately uh, I don't have the time or energy to make my own custom one, and they were out of a lot of the different sizes. And there we are, pulley system set up. So now as the motor turns, it will turn my potentiometer twice as much because we've got a 40 to 20 reduction and we've got a servo motor. Next, we need to be able to attach this arm to that. To do that, I've already done a bit of sneaky welding and I've made us this piece. So this is the nut that came with the wiper motor and then I've welded some all thread to it and that's just going to make the end of our motor longer so that way we can attach this so zoomed in we just screw this on to the end of the wiper motor attach the steering arm and then we've got a second washer and nut. And that's it. We are done for the hardware portion of the build. Once we get some code knocked into the Arduino, then uh, we'll be able to watch this thing spin. We're going to go over to CAD now, and I will show you exactly through the coding process. So, code. If you want the full breakdown, go to GitHub. I've got the download link for the code there, as well as a readme document with all the information line by line on what the code does. Pretty darn simple. If you look at the graphic, there's a steering wheel. Just below that, there's the steering wheel potentiometer, so what the steering wheel turns. Below that, there's a feedback potentiometer. That's what the two front tires turn, the two front tires, the uh, black bars at the bottom. Now, innately, Potentiometers in the Arduino platform go from 0 to 1,023. So that's like 1,023 little segments that we'd have to turn through at too high a resolution for this project. First bit of code we're going to do is to map that to 0 uh, to 90. So then we have 90 segments that we can pick with our steering wheel. Next, pretty darn simple. If the two potentiometers are the same, do nothing. If though the steering wheel potentiometer is higher than the feedback, then turn the motor to the left so it meets. If the steering wheel is lower, then turn the motor to the right. So that way both potentiometers are always trying to be the same. Next, we just introduce some like limit switches in the code. So that way, if you take the steering wheel all the way to a left-hand lock, then the motor will travel only far enough to get to a full left-hand turn. It won't travel so far that it bashes into the mechanical stops on the go-kart. Same thing for the right-hand side. Now, after that, there's just a little bit of code that covers the speed that the two things travel. Basically, 
If there's a big difference between the potentiometers, go full speed. If there's a little difference, go a bit slower. Pretty simple. Again, everything's up on GitHub. Now, let's get to the practical demonstration. Here we are, the moment of truth. Steering potentiometers down here. Let's give it a try. So, if we take it over to the right and the left, ooh, looking good and smooth so far. And quick. Yeah. So, steering is done. I know what you're thinking. That's not a real test. You got no weight on it, plus it's on a smooth bench. How many amps are you pulling up top? That is a good question. Time for the ultimate load test. Ignore the sucks. Ooh, it's working at least. Yeah. All right, so that's it's a fair amount of weight right on the front, more than I'll ever actually experience. Beautiful. Next steps, we are going to build out the entire body of the go-kart. I'm going to do that off screen because it's all super specific to my project. Or at least, you know, this build. Next video, we are going to install all the peripheral electronics. So we've got off-road headlights, LEDs for the bottom, brake lights, uh, Bluetooth speakers, Bluetooth. We're going to do a remote, trill, remote kill switch for me. Lots of buttons, lots of wiring. I'll see you next time.